question about Jamie is which comes first, the politics or the artwork? And I always think kind of the politics comes first and the political thing that you're doing with the art. Um, in fact, on the back of an early Sex Pistols single, I think it was Holidays in the Sun, that's when I made the connection because there's a picture of these nice people in a nice house eating some nice food uh, with a nice child and a nice table and a nice tablecloth. And I recognize that from uh, a green book called Leaving the 20th Century, which was like um, uh, a best of or collected situationist history published in paperback in England in about 1970, for which Jamie had obviously done. Jamie did the artwork. Jamie. Uh, designed, I believe, that particular book. I mean, the strange thing about situationism, which Malcolm and Jamie dabbled in in the late 60s and early 70s, was that that particular um, anarchist or post-anarchist movement used artwork for political reasons. Uh, its greatest use of artwork, uh, the situationist, was to take photographs or cartoons and put bubbles and statements in. Um, in fact, there was a particular one from Strasbourg in 66, which was called, ignore the phone, which was called um, The Return of the Drotted Column, which got me into situations, which was two cowboys walking along or driving along and bubbles. But that whole idea of like transforming imagery and using it for political reasons is where kind of Jamie came from. It's as if the artwork, the artwork was secondary to the political purpose. And certainly within the Sex Pistols, you get a lot of that. Um, I always think one of, one of Jamie's one of Jamie's best bits. One of Jamie's best bits was the American Express card, which was a Sex Pistols single that American Express went berserk about. Um, but it was uh, a delightful piece of subversion, and the subversion came before the artwork. I always think. I mean, Jamie and I had a particularly weird cross current. In the, um, we both knew this story. Uh, we both thought we knew that um, Guy Debord was the Situationist from the 50s in France had published a book called Au Contraire du Cinema and had put it um, in sandpaper binder. And at the same time, film cams, I, I, I work in television and film cams are really nice objects. And back in the about 78, 79, when I started the record company, we wanted to put singles in a metal box, a metal film can. And Jamie had wanted to do the Guy de Bois sleeve with sandpaper. And no one would let Jamie do it at Virgin. And I never got around to doing mine at Factory. But three years later, at Factory, I did the Guy de Bois thing by putting the first Rotty Column album in sandpaper, which was a lot of fun, 2,000 copies. And Jamie did the film box for Pill, Public Image Limited first, which should be great, great set. So in other words, we kind of cross currented on that one. And since we're talking about Liverpool a little bit, it was always interesting that it was the uh, assholes at Probe Records in Liverpool who were the most uh, exhausted in their complaints about the damage done to their stock by the Dorotti Column album and the sand getting from the sandpaper getting into all the records. And Probe never paid me for it. It's one of my pleasure time. I don't like getting complaints. So that's Jamie and the politics and stuff. I wrote it. Excellent, excellent stuff. The one complaint I have is that Jamie quite rightly um, epatéed la bourgeoisie, and still does, uh, shocks, and is controversial. Um, I think in particular of that wonderful, the swastika done in marijuana leaves, which was a, a phenomenally shocking image. And, and yet, sometime in the mid-80s, when I was quoted in Enemy as saying, James Anderton is right about gays or whatever, which was me being controversial, and actually trying to make some point about the lifestyle of San Francisco and New York, and that no one had come to terms with it, uh, I was then going to meet Frank Clark, who I was very friendly with, and Maggie and Jamie in London, and Maggie and Jamie turned up early and said, for God's sake, why did you say that, you know, don't have a row with Frank, and I proceeded to have a row with Frank, and then for about four years, um, Jamie and Maggie and Frank didn't talk to me. I think Frank still doesn't talk to me. But I always thought at the time, since Jamie's life has been about shocking people, uh, it's a bit it's a bit tough of him to like, you know, turn his back on me because I said something that was controversial 
or unpleasant. I mean, it's like, how unpleasant can you get? Did I get too unpleasant? So I think Jamie should have uh, stayed on course with that one.